I hope I found you all again, and as usual, feeling tickety boo. Now, welcome to another fun-filled show. Do we have a show for you? Have we got a show? For you? Yeah, we've got a show for you. Right, we've got five films, I think, if I remember. Can't remember. Could be five. Could be four. Could be six. No idea. Right. First one is about a woman with something strange in her brain, very unusual. Then we've got a man who burned his own house down. Right, it gets worse. Do you fancy going to an auction? We've got something for sale there. We've all, we've also got a guy from Russia who claims to be um, Jesus. That's quite bizarre. And we've got a woman who refused to stay dead. Now, I think it's best we crack on, shall we? So, let's crack on! A woman who underwent a CT scan in China has found she's got two needles stuck in her head. The 29-year-old has undergone a scan after being involved in a car accident because doctors had recommended that she be checked out for any possible head injury. When the images came back, however, to everyone's surprise, the woman appeared to have two large needles embedded inside her brain, each measuring approximately five centimeters in length. What made the discovery all the more mysterious was the fact that the needles had nothing to do with the car accident. They had seemingly been there for years without her even knowing about them. Stranger still, she had no recollection whatsoever of any head injuries and it appeared that they must have been inserted when she was young because, judging by the diameter of the needles, they would have been unable to pierce the skull of an adult. Remarkably, the woman never experienced any headaches or any other problems as a result. Because of this, it is unlikely that doctors will attempt to remove them. The case has now been reported to the police for further investigation. How bizarre! Needles in your head, little lovelies! Oh, no, 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 no. A Florida man ended up burning his own house to the ground because he was afraid of vampires. According to reports, the 64-year-old's wife had earlier attempted to have him committed for mental health reasons, but when police officers arrived, he deemed to be acting rationally, meaning that he could not be committed. Nonetheless, a few hours later, he became violent and started to break windows with his cane while shouting, the vampires are going to defend themselves. How bizarre! He ultimately managed to set his house on fire by throwing an accelerant on the stove. He then went around knocking on his neighbours' doors to tell them that his wife was still inside while the house was on fire. The house was completely destroyed in the fire. However, his wife managed to escape unharmed. The man was promptly arrested at the scene. It remains unclear what caused him to fly off the rails. Well, well, well. How bizarre! A gothic-looking box full of vampire-slaying paraphernalia is expected to fetch a hefty sum at auction. This fascinating kit, which is housed within an ornate metal-bound box, looks like something straight out of a movie. A treasure trove of tools designed to aid someone in the disposal of a vampire. Inside can be found a bottle of shark's teeth, a rosary, a pair of pliers, a silver-bladed pocket knife, an ivory-robed wolf carrying rosary beads and a small blue bottle containing a mysterious substance. It also contains a 1942 copy of the New Testament that happens to be inscribed with what is perhaps the only clue as to the origins of the box. The name Isabella Swarbrick. Other than that, little is known about this kit. Who made it? Or where it came from? Fancy bidding on it? A major operation this week saw an armed police unit swoop in to arrest the leader of a modern-day cult. Sergei Turup, who was once a traffic officer, 
but who now goes by the name of Visarion, claims that he experienced an awakening after losing his job in 1989, and now has thousands of followers who believe him to be the living reincarnation of Jesus Christ himself. His movement, which is known as the Church of the Last Testament, is based in Siberia, where his followers live in a number of remote hamlets and villages. I am not God, and it is a mistake to see Jesus as God, he once said, but I am the living word of God the Father. Everything that God wants to say, he says through me. Russian authorities, however, have never been a fan, instead declaring his cult an illegal religious organization and accusing it both of extorting money and subjecting its followers to emotional abuse. Things came to a head this week when a major operation was carried out involving helicopters and armed officers who stormed in the area and arrested both Vizarian and his two top aides. The operation involved officers from the Russia's FSB security service as well as the police. Vizarian was last seen being led out to a helicopter by masked troops. Exactly what will happen to him now remains to be seen. An 81-year-old woman woke up after she had spent the night in a Russian morgue. She was brought back from the other side after doctors had declared her dead. Zineda Konova was declared dead on the 14th of August after an operation to remove a bowel obstruction. She was taken to the morgue at 1.10 a.m. But almost seven hours later, at 8 a.m., a working woman got the shock of her life. She found Zineda stretched out on the floor. A doctor later confessed he had sent the body to the mortuary after 1 hour 20 minutes after her death, instead of the 2 hours as the rule requires. Relatives of the pensioner are now planning to sue the hospital. How bizarre! Come back my little lovelies, I hope you enjoyed that. As usual let us know your thoughts, keep everything nice and clean in the diggity boo now. Did any of you catch the bonus special that we threw out last week? It was a one-off, and we might do one or two more. Just throw them in very quickly, midweek bonus for you. Now, how marvellous is that? Right, that's enough from me. Oh, welcome to all the new subscribers. I nearly forgot. Right, that is enough from me for now. So, until next time, my little lovelies, you all take care and stay safe. Ta-da, my little lovelies. Ta-da!